Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have an unboxing of the Poco F6. Let's get started. Pay close attention because this is the base model of the series. There is also the Poco F6 Pro, but this time we will be unboxing the base model. So join me in taking it out of the box. So, first we're going to come across this envelope. Let's take a look at what's inside here. There's the key to remove the SIM card tray and then we find the usual documentation, some quick guides and simple papers. And finally we come across a case which in true Poco recent device style is a case that has solid padding in a dark grey shade. But notice that unlike other Pocos, in this case it doesn't have a completely rectangular window cutout. So I feel it looks much nicer, at least from my point of view. And it's always good news that you do get a case included here in the box so you don't have to be buying a case separately. Because at times those can be a little hard to find as well, but there it is. Let's go ahead and see what else is here in the box. We get right into the cell phone and let's take a look at the features that the manufacturer wants to highlight about it. It has the Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 processor. A pretty good processor, although the S should not mislead you. Because under most nomenclature we would think that the S edition is an improved edition of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But in fact in this case it is an inferior version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So it can compete a lot against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and even it seems to me to be slightly below the 8 Gen 2. But in a moment we'll confirm that when we benchmark. For now, let me show you that it has a crystal res display. That's what it's decided to name it to little. It's an AMOLED display with about 20 Hz in its refresh rate. It supports 90 watt charging, a little bit less than its big brother with the Pro model. And finally, it has 50 megapixel camera with optical stabilization. I'll tell you about the rest of the specs of the photographic system in a moment. But let's get this device out of this bag. And here we have the device. It actually has a simple build. It doesn't look very premium or anything, it looks basic, but obviously it's a device that's betting a lot more on high performance and not so much on design that has characterized this brand during all its launches. And this one I think is no exception, unlike the Pro model, where we do find a little more premium design with metal frames. But let's get this device powered up while we see what else comes in the box. And we find the 90 watt charger. Pay attention because this is a new charger that Xiaomi is introducing. A load that will surely be quite powerful with the USB-A connector. They are not yet encouraged to use the USB-C port on their chargers. So the cable will have these two connectors with an orange highlight so you can easily distinguish it. Because remember you need to use the original cable if you want to enjoy the fastest charging possible. So this is what comes in the box. Let me put all this content back and we'll take a look at the phone. And I've already got the device set up here, so let's take a look at its specs. I already gave you a preview of some of them that the manufacturer has highlighted, but let's give you a general overview of each of its features. It has a thickness of 8 mm and weighs 179 grams. So due to the finish that has plastic frames and the simpler back cover, it is much lighter than its big brother, although they maintain many similar features. It also has the IP64 level of resistance against water and dust. This means that it resists splashes and has a high level of dust resistance but cannot be submerged. The screen is 6.67 inches in its diagonal. It also offers us AMOLED technology for vivid colors. It also has a refresh rate of 120 Hz and a peak brightness of 2400 nits when viewing HDR content. It is also protected with Gorilla Glass Victus. So it's a display that everywhere you look it's excellent. Not only does it give us a good image quality, but it's also going to offer us a high level of resistance and it's even a screen that we could consider comfortable since it has 1920 Hz in its dimming rate, which is not so noticeable to the eye, but it significantly reduces the flicker that can fatigue our eyesight, especially at night when we have the brightness low. The front camera is 20 megapixels with f2.2 aperture. It's funny because it's been a long time since I haven't seen a Xiaomi camera that wasn't 16 megapixels. So it looks like they finally changed the sensor. 
and here's my example this is a capture before taking the picture so you can see that it looks very overexposed to the most lit area but after taking the picture it does a better balance of highlights and shadows I think the colors are fine the level of detail is also about right so it's a front facing camera that I think is going to deliver in a good way although it's never been one of the main points in little and on the back we have two cameras the main one is 50 megapixels with optical stabilization and f 1.59 aperture the aperture is a highlight because it has a very good light input compared to other devices it really gets to stand out a lot so it should take good pictures at night in conjunction with the high resolution sensor that's going to merge the pixels so it's a camera that can certainly be attractive and the second camera is 8 megapixels it's an ultra wide camera with f 2.2 aperture and I've got some example pictures here this is with the ultra wide camera and I think it gives us good image quality for what we expect at its price point I think it's a camera that although it's not spectacular it does a good job now this is the photograph with the main camera and I think it has a very good quality good detail even looks good color and in this case the gray cloud looks very good it does not look like it is overexposed now you're looking at the 2x zoom picture and notice that even though it's a digital zoom it actually maintains optical quality so you see very good detail similar to what you would find if you had a 52 millimeter telephoto camera so I like the result now you're looking at a photograph with the 5x digital zoom and it still has good quality in this case it no longer looks like it's fully optical quality but believe me within its price range it will be one of the best devices in terms of zoom handling in fact note that at the maximum zoom which is 10x it also has a good quality considering that we are not talking about optical zoom but only digital zoom so it stands up very well despite not having a zoom camera I think it has a good performance in that aspect and despite not having a macro camera look at the results this is as close as you can get to small objects so it's not able to get too close but if you start to apply a little bit of digital zoom it still maintains excellent performance notice that at the 4x zoom setting it is even able to pick up this texture of this computer and its fingerprint reader so it is able to give us very detailed pictures even of tiny objects even though it doesn't have a macro camera in fact I think the result is much better compared to what the macro cameras of other devices offer us and finally look at the performance it has in portrait photographs I think it has a good detection of the foreground to blur correctly the second plane makes it very good quality so in that sense also meets despite not having a depth camera then I think Poco is managing very well the resources that this device has without unnecessary expenses what I would like is that it would let us take portrait pictures with telephoto perspective that is to say that it would let us apply a little zoom because there are other devices that do and we already saw in these results that the zoom handles it with very good quality then it would be much better if it would allow us to zoom to have a better perspective much more natural but it is the only thing that could put against this camera because it really is very good even though it does not have so many lenses or so many cameras in total the system is good in addition it can record in 4k the wide camera drops in its resolution and the front camera also but if you want to record with high quality you can use this camera and again it will have an excellent quality and level of detail the battery is 5000 milliamps and supports 90 watts charge included in the box although the capacity is very standard compared to what we see in other devices the charge is very fast at least in theory but remember that in the review we will test both the battery and the camera or not or but the highlight of this device will undoubtedly be its performance comes with 256 gigabytes of storage UFS 4.0 that last data is very important because not all manufacturers tell us what version of storage used but Xiaomi does and confirms that it is a very fast storage for this price is exaggeratedly good and there is also a version available with 512 gigabytes of RAM then the truth is that the specs are very good and the processor is the Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 I already anticipated you don't think it is superior to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 because the S means it is a lower version but let's run a benchmark to get more clarity on the power level that this device is capable of achieving I will get back to you when this benchmark is finished and ready we already have here the result 1850 
in single core 1853 in multi core and i already checked and they are very similar numbers to what the snapdragon 8 gen 2 offers us then they are processors that are very similar possibly have some differences in the modem or connectivity or compatibility with some graphics but they are very specific details in particular i would say that they have a performance almost the same but you know that in the video review i will tell you many more details of the operation of this device do not forget to indicate it and we'll see you next time Bye.